everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tiffany Benson, one part of Team Benson, and today we are making applesauce because it is, I think I'm gonna call this Canning Monday. So let's start with some amazing applesauce, which is one of my favorite things to have in my pantry. All right guys, so applesauce is something that is really super easy to make. And if you have a lot of apples like I have here and a mixture of apples, you can give yourself an amazing like combination of flavors, which is really, really nice. So I am going to, I started off by washing all of these apples in a little bit of vinegar and water. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to peel all of these apples. Now, when I peel them, you're going to want to have some type of like either a fruit protector or someone actually told me lemon juice would do the trick too as well. So I have another bucket of water that I'm going to fill up, add a little bit of lemon juice, and then I'm going to go ahead, peel all my apples, put them in there, and then I will be back when I'm chopping them all up. Now guys, I almost forgot to list out all of my steps because Although I'm doing this every every Monday and some of you guys have been watching this every Monday for the past month, there might be somebody that is new to my channel and I wanna make sure that they have the proper steps when it comes to water bath canning. So I'm going to, I have my big water bath canner out and it is on the stove right now warming up. And then I'm also going to have my canning book. This is my ball canning preserving book and I'm following the recipe out of there. You can use lemon juice or you can use fruit protector. Fruit protector is also by ball. That'll keep it from turning brown. Um, you don't have to use either one of those. Your fruit will just probably though turn like a brownish color. If you're using cinnamon in your recipe, it may not be a big deal to you if it does turn brown. And the other thing I'm gonna make sure I have is filtered water. And I'm either, well, I'm using water out of my Berkey. Um, if you guys don't have a Berkey, I will link it down below. They're amazing. Or you can have bottled water or something like that. And then I'm just gonna make sure I have my jars nice and clean with their lids and their rings all nice and clean. And we are gonna get started. So I'm gonna go and I'm going to peel this big bucket of apples and I will be right back. All right guys, so my hand hurts after that. But I have a big batch of a mixture of Fiji apples and Gala apples. I don't like just regular red apples um, for my applesauce. These are the two apples that I prefer. And luckily there is orchards here in Arizona that have picked them out. Now, I am going to, I did this year get one of these little guys because I did not have one beforehand. And coring apples is not that fun. <laughs> so I am gonna have one of these little guys so that then I could just go ahead and just easily do that. Now that was a lot easier. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of the apple pieces and I'm gonna make sure that they don't have any of the uh, seed parts, like the hard parts in them. If they do, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut them out. And then I'm going to save all of the cores for to make a, my own apple cider vinegar. And then for the skins, I am going to save all those in freezer bags in order to feed it to my worms. Now, for those of you guys that have composting worms, like I do, your worms need to eat. They're not just like regular earthworms that just, you know, are fine by themselves. They need to eat food. So if you don't feed them, they're gonna go away or they're not gonna reproduce, which is what you want is for your worms to reproduce. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to freeze them because right now I'm going through the rest of my greens that I had from last year. And so since I have those greens from last year, I can still feed them those, but then I'm gonna need something to feed them later on. So that's why I'm gonna freeze those. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna core all of these. I'm gonna get them into my big Dutch oven and I will be back with the next step. So I have them all chopped up and they're put into my Dutch oven. I just have them chopped into pieces. I started using the uh, 
um, a little apple core, but then I was getting frustrated because it was taking too much of like the inner piece off. So I just went back to my butcher knife, which I can do really fast because I've been making applesauce for years upon years, years now. So now I went ahead and I added a cup and a half of water to this. I added it earlier on just to keep from the bottoms of the apples that were first in there from browning. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get this on a boil so that I can start cooking these apples. And I'm just going to cook them all the way until they're completely mushy. So let me get them on the flame and then I will bring you guys back with a little update on how they're boiling. Okay guys, just a little bit of an update. Added a little bit more water just because I had a lot more apples than what the recipe called for. So I'm just gonna make sure I keep giving this a stir um, just so that nothing sticks or anything like that. And I'm gonna continue to let these cook until they get soft to where I can just break them apart with a spoon and they're kind of mushy. Okay, so now we're moving on to the next step. So now I have my trusty emergent immersion blender and I got my water bath canner started now I'm going to want to get that going because I want there not to be a huge delay in between when this is ready and when the water bath canner is warm so I'm just going to go through and I'm going to start to blend the eggs already looks like yummy applesauce guys. So I'm going to go through and get this all blended and then I will be right back. So all right guys, so this is how our applesauce looked after I blended it all up. It looks amazing and it smells even more amazing. And now this is a step where you can add sugar or not add sugar to it. So this is a step where you guys can add sugar to it if you want. Um, I like to have my applesauce a little bit sweeter. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a cup and a little over a cup and a half of sugar. I'm going to taste it and kind of see how it goes um, with it. So you don't have to add sugar to it. I know a lot of people don't want something super sweet, so you don't have to add sugar to it. But if you want it just to be sweeter, you can go ahead and do that. Now, when I get it to the point to where I like it with sweetness, then I'm going to return it back to the oven or back to the stove on a really low heat just to keep it pretty warm. I want to keep this around 200 degrees. So then when I go to bottle it, it's still pretty hot. Um, and that's why I started my water bath canner because I wanted to get it kind of going. But until it's completely ready, I want to keep this hot. I do not want to let it cool down. So we have the uh, pressure canner, or not the pressure canner, but the water bath canner is getting nice and boily. And we're going to take our warm jars. You want to make sure your jars are warm just because your applesauce is hot, about 200 degrees. And we're just going to fill each one of these. I have a little funnel to make sure I don't make a mess. And we're going to fill each one of these and give it a half an inch headspace. Now applesauce is one of my absolute favorite things to make. It's something that not only do we use it during the holidays when we have potato latkes and different things like that, but it's something nice just to have in the refrigerator. Um, when you have it nice and cool, like if you just need like a quick snack or something like that, applesauce is where it's at. And for those of you guys that have babies, this is a perfect thing to be able to start making your baby food. Um, it's something that you can water bath can and it'll be nice and safe so that then you can just reach in and grab it whenever you need to. So I'm going to be making lots more applesauce. I did just start with these, but I am going to make, I want at least 10 to 15 jars of applesauce in our pantry. So there's going to be a lot of applesauce making in this house. I'm going to go ahead finish filling these up and then I'm going to add the clean lids and rings to them. Alright guys, so I was hoping for seven jars. I actually got five jars and a little bit. Um, well, almost a, a six jar. But not to worry, that jar is going to go into the refrigerator and it's going to be eaten probably like tonight, let's be honest. So I'm going to go ahead and just degas this, make sure that there's no air bubbles in there from each one of the jars. 
And then I'm just gonna take my ring and I'm gonna stick them on all of the lids. Now I went ahead, oops, almost forgot a step, guys. I am going to wash all of the lids, wipe them all down with some vinegar um, and a paper towel. So I feel like I have been canning for like three weeks straight. So it's starting to become like a, oh, you just do this, 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 and this. And I'm missing steps, but this is an important step that you guys wanna do. You wanna make sure that you are wiping down the lids um, just because you don't want there to be any debris or anything like that on the uh, on the lid so it doesn't falsely seal. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just going to put those on and then I'm gonna take the ring and I'm just gonna add it finger tight. Now this is really, really hot, these jars are, um, because once again, we have to have our applesauce super hot. Now if you come to the point to where you say you have too much applesauce and not enough jars or, or not enough room in your water bath canner, then what you're gonna wanna do is you're going to want to, this only process for like 20 minutes, but you're just gonna want to make sure you heat that applesauce back up in order to put it back in the jars and then can those jars. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish screwing these on and then I'm just going to put them in the canner and space them out and I'm gonna let these can for, let me just double check that I'm telling you guys right, 20 minutes. Um, my canner's already a rolling boil, so they're gonna go right in and process for those 20 minutes, and I'll be back when they're done. All right, guys, and there we have it. Some absolute beautiful jars of applesauce. So I'm gonna go ahead and let these cool for 12 hours and listen out for the pop. All right, guys, so there we have it. Her pop. <laughs> we have our beautiful applesauce that we're gonna let cool for 12 hours and then put that just in the pantry it's shelf stable once it pops down and then as a byproduct we are making some apple cider vinegar and we also got some good old-fashioned worm food now I know that I can make a bunch of more apple cider vinegar out of this and other things but it is really important for me to keep my worms producing and right now I want to make sure that I have a variety of food for them throughout the year. They're kind of like my pets at this point. I'm like pretty much like hashtag worm mom. <laughs> so I'm going to make sure that I have some good little food scraps for them. And the more I feed them, the more they're going to produce. Another pop. So I hope that you guys are canning. This has been a fun series for me to be able to share with you guys. I'm probably going to can up more applesauce. So I want to get at least 15 jars in the cabinet. We'll see how that goes. Um, I'm going to take a break from water bath canning for this series and we are going to go into either a ferment or maybe some freezing. I am going to be pressure canning, but I'm not, I've only been pressure canning for a year, so I don't want to show you guys how I pressure can yet just because nobody has died. I haven't gotten botulism anywhere, but I haven't officially perfected it. And so, Water bath canning I'm great at, freezing I'm, I'm great at, dehydrating I'm great at, so we're going to do all of those in this series. But until next time, make sure you guys grow yourselves a garden because even a small space can provide you with tons of food. Bye guys!